So I'm Tabitha Beal and I'm with Polk County's Parks and Natural Resources. I'm with the Environmental Lands Program. My title is the Environmental Lands Stewardship Coordinator and today we're at Cricket Lake Prairie, one of our 15 environmental land sites and we're going to be surveying for sand skinks. You may ask what is a sand skink and why do we care? Well first of all sand skinks are a tiny lizard. They're almost legless but they do have arms and legs. They're about the size of a number two pencil. And the cool thing about them is they're completely fossorial, meaning they live their entire lives under sand. So what we're actually looking for today under boards is their S-shaped tracks that they leave when they come to the surface to forage. And so the federal government has protected this species, and anytime we have a protected species, it is our responsibility as land managers to make sure we know how the population is doing. Today we're going to be checking in and following up on a survey that we've been doing for over 13 years, which is the longest running monitoring of a sand skink species. So join us as we go check some cover boards. So one of the reasons we do the sand skink monitoring here at Cricket Lake Prairie is because we started this project back in oh, 2002 and uh, the sand skink monitoring project. And every station we went to, there were sand skinks at it. Well, shortly thereafter, if you remember what happened in 2004, we had three hurricanes. All three of those hurricanes crossed here over the Babson Park area, which is where Crooked Lake Prairie is located near. And this site went underwater. In fact, the entire site, except for about 40 acres, was underwater at one point. That year, we were doing scrub jay monitoring in the scrub in um, inner tube floats to float around with binoculars to monitor our scrub jays because the whole site was under about a foot of water. Well, the years following the hurricane, the sand skink population tanked. And for the next five years, we had very few sand skinks. And we've seen in the last couple years an increase. And like we're seeing today, it's almost that they're back to the way they were before the hurricanes, seeing tracks at almost every single station, which is really a cool thing to track over the long-term history of the sand skinks. Um, life history and start to learn a bit, little bit more about population dynamics with them. So we're at Crooked Lake Prairie and this map shows the boundaries outlined in white. Each of the numbered are our monitoring stations. At each station we have the four boards that we are checking. Those are our four cover boards that are located at cardinal directions north, south, east, and west. Crooked Lake Prairie is approximately 525 acres and on this site we have a little over 30 stations that we do um, for sand skink monitoring. So the cover boards are sheets of plywood that are cut in an approximate size for our study of two foot by two foot. And they're laid at those cardinal directions. The cover boards is a typical way to monitor for um, amphibians and reptiles. We call those herps in the um, ecology world. And so what it does is creates a microclimate the boards do with the ground, trapping moisture, provide a little bit of shade and acts as a refuge from um, arid regions like we are here in Central Florida. And what it does is it attracts insects like antlions or small ants and attracts other things that the sand skink finds as their food item. And so they are attracted to the board there of their forage for eating and come to the surface. And that's how we're able to track their, see their um, tracks. And that's what we're looking for under the boards, is just simply the presence or absence of a sand skiing track under the board. So we do this during April and May. We actually survey for several weeks throughout April and May, and this has been the designated time the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has determined is um, acceptable for surveying for sand skinks. What we do know about them is they seem to be most active during this time frame. There are many other times of the years where it appears they're completely dormant and you would be out here in December or in November and we wouldn't find any tracks on this site. So April and May is what we believe to be their most active period of time of year. So at each station we have four boards. They're set up at the cardinal directions, north, south, east, or west. We've already checked north, south, and west. This is our east board. Let's see what we got here today. And any kind of track counts. There's a very shallow track on the side over here, which is pretty hard to see with the um, shade of the trees right now. But this would count as presence. And that's all we're doing at this point is recording the presence or absence of the sand skinks on the site. We ask that if you're out hiking on one of our environmental land sites, we always want you to pick up trash, of course, and take it with you because we, uh, we want you to help us keep our sites clean. 
But if you see very specifically laid two foot by two foot plywood sheets of plywood on the ground, that's us doing our research. So please just let them sit, uh, leave them be, do not disturb them, they're part of our monitoring. If you have any questions, you're feel, feel free to call us anytime to get more information about this study or other projects we have going on in environmental lands.